hope this is Gia Dancing in another tutorial and this week we're gonna paint something really fun and it is bottle and wine glasses if you haven't painted this in our class um, I'll suggest you have fun with this this is really really easy and we are going to start with another fun thing this paint is acrylic and you know if you have painted with acrylics acrylics dry super fast this is the third week that I'll be using this palette and this palette together and um, I do this quite often I um, put my paint in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag and push all the air out as much as possible and the thing I do is put them together um, and obviously I always have the one that has less paint on the top because in the beginning there will be a little bit more um, wet and fluid so and I'm going to be using this palette and this palette for the third week. This is exciting because this could be also paint in the trash and it's going to end up to be paint on a canvas or acrylic paper. I'm planning my canvas. There is the bottle. So the bottle is going to start from here. It's going to have the neck right here and it's gonna end right here so what do I have I have a rectangle and another small rectangle so do you see my two rectangles and those two rectangles will get hooked together I'm gonna curve this and go around and then I'm gonna curve this and go around I need not a flat bottom because the element also it's a cylindrical so I will curve that the same is gonna happen on the top so there's two ways of doing that um, it's either you not going to see the top of the wine bottle or you will see so if I can see in I am going to have a uh, oval on the top and I'm gonna make a little bit of a bigger edge creating the opening of the bottle but if I don't want to do that I am going to curve it the same as the bottle on the bottom now what do we have next to it we have two wine glasses they're much shorter they'll come up from here there is one the next one is a little higher because it's further away to here and then I have a stem it will end up behind kind of the wine glass and this one is gonna be here so I have almost like I did few teas now this one what's going to happen is I'm gonna do an oval I can hide some of the glass here half an oval for this and a half an oval for this what's on the top a very very elongated oval and you see my oval end up a little bit smaller here so this is why I'll do few circles or few ovals going around to choose the better line and your eraser if you have too many lines I did it a little bit too dark so you guys can see but I don't need that and I'm gonna squish a little bit this oval I don't need to see inside too much there is my oval and also I want to give this one is like a perfect half an oval and this one I wanted to give a little bit bigger bottom of my glass so I'm gonna extend my oval a little bit to the side and go around so I'm creating a little bit different shape because I don't like painting the same thing again and again stem stem is simple you're just going to have a very very skinny rectangle I'm gonna connect it with beautiful line here same thing and I'm gonna connect it with a beautiful line. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom part. 
and then what do we have on the bottom it's gonna be almost the same as the top just slightly open because we'll be able to see that bottom more than the top and pretty much following almost that twice smiley face and we are going to close it close it behind and this is pretty much ovals half an oval another oval so you have two whole ovals one half oval and a rectangle and all your lines get connected i made my glass almost the same for the stem and the top you can make it taller if you like or shorter or whatever you want to do the bottle we have a rectangle and a rectangle beautifully co connected um, between with a curvy line and this is pretty much our main element the next part is decide where do you want to put the table you can put it high up or low or whatever you want i'm going to just bring it a little bit higher this time and this is the background that it's further away and this is the background that it's closer so it's part of the foreground and my close image all right so this is done i'm gonna just slightly erase it all right so what am i doing scooping a big chunk of orangey yellow with some brown and i'm gonna start working on my background and just a little bit of water i am moving in kind of an x motion do you see how much darker i am so i'm gonna scoop a little bit of the lighter yellow and a little bit of white and they are getting much less fluidly fluid my paints are starting to get dry but i can still use them i almost feel like i'm painting with something between oil and acrylic so it's really really cool i'm loving it So I'm taking red and blue. So red and blue, what does that do? Kind of like a purplish color. And again, I will list all the materials I am using. So do you see how I'm getting out of my canvas? I could be putting tape. Um, if you don't want to use mat, use painter's tape and tape your um, area painting area so let's add some of the shadow when we have that beautiful color in here there is my shadow you can use painter's tape to mark your painting area and then when you remove it you're gonna have a perfect clean edge I like to do this. I like to come outside and have some of that because I like seeing it. But again, it's really up to you. Um, experiment with whatever you're doing. If somebody tells you go left, try right and see what happens. Um, look at different artists. Check different artists and see what they have done and a lot of really famous old masters have copied and copied other masters before them until they discovered their own style so check other people find what they do how they do it and paint and see where it's gonna take you all right so i'm going to take 
So that yellow, I'm like running out of some of my paint. That's awesome. And place it here. Where's my brown on this side? Let's darken it a little bit. Darkening it on this side. And going over my shadow too. I'm giving that shadow a little bit more of a hue, yellowy hue. Let's get some of that fun color. My brush is not being washed, so I'm using all those colors. Oh, so there is um, blue paint that it looks completely dry. So for three weeks, some of them have dried up. This red is not. This is a little bit black as that. Okay, so I dirty my brush a little bit too much, but let's see. Maybe I'll use all these colors that I just pocked with my brush. Why not? Okay. So I'm moving my brush from left to right on the on the bottom area, and the reason why is again illusion. I'm creating the illusion of a surface. The background could have had many spots left and right, and this is why I was moving my brush in an X motion. I'm washing my brush right now because I got too many colors that I do not care for. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue, and I'm gonna add blue, white bit scoop some of my orange which I will put more what happens when we add blue and yellow together or where we add blue to our yellow or yellow to our blue it's going to be turning green so this is why I add a spot and I didn't want it to go over the whole spot of blue I wanted to leave a little bit of a blue dot there or spot whatever you want to call it and here is my background. Let's get a little bit more blue. And I'm going to just leave it like this. So my brush barely has color. So this is the time when I'm gonna go in and I know everything is still wet. I'm gonna blend in smudge places that I feel like they have too much. Let's get a little bit of orange too. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange right here. I'm running out of yellow and that's awesome. I have used this for three weeks. I can't believe it. Usually I do two weeks and I run out of color. So um, because I was planning to do few paintings, I think I put too much paint into my palette and I was able to preserve it and save it. Okay, so take a little bit of the blue, I'll wipe it up here and then I'll go back here a little bit more. And I'm crossing over parts of my glass, it's okay because we're painting with acrylics, it's gonna cover it up. We are in a safe place. There is a little bit of this orange. There would be it here. And if you see this painting has more green and I decided to go a little bit different with that one and it's okay. This one also, it feels dry. So let's see, this green is good. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the green a tab because I'm gonna use green in my glasses and bottles so let's clean this up and spread it out to get across a little bit of the black or orange Just a little bit right here, and also here. Okay, so what I was trying to do is, it's so difficult for me to match or 
gradually move from a color to color with the stems of the glass. So what I did is I can still see the pencil marks, but I barely covered them, but I was able to push some of the paint across. And now it seems more like it's moving without a break so much. Um, okay, it's time to pour some orange, orangey yellow. And I am painting, ooh, this is ochre. Let's just push a little ochre here, why not? This happens when you don't wear your glasses when you're trying to pick paint. Let's get a little bit of yellow. each other and that's okay because I don't really have a lot. So normally this is the amount of paint you want to start with, um, not this amount of paint, which is a total waste, but I will try to use as much as possible. So I am going to thicken here a little bit and leave Spots and brush strokes so it's more three-dimensional looking it looks great and pencil marks I love personally seeing if you don't like pencil marks then um, use your pencil very very light so you don't see them all right so what are we starting with our um, main objects and I'm going to change my brush to a 3 8 of an angle brush. I love angle brushes and the reason why is this little area I can go into very small spaces so it's almost like using a very small thin brush and also I can use much bigger area for bigger areas and small for small areas. So I just love the angle brush, my favorite brush. Um, but I do use all the brushes, I think. The brush that I use least is the feather brush, which is, or it is this brush. And it's probably brand new. I have a few of those. It's fun to use them in trees or um, animal that has a lot of hair. I just prefer to use different brushes. So this is what I'm saying is find your brush, find what you like, um, experiment with everything because you will never know what you like until you try it. Wow, those are some deep thoughts. All right, so I'm going to get my shadow side up first. So there is my shadow side. Let's get a little black in here. Black is not dry. Okay, perfect. So there is my shadow side. Also, I can add this one right here. And the beautiful thing is, if I go a little bit overboard with my shadows, I can change that. There's that part. And this painting is forgiving. We don't have to be perfect with this. So do you see, I, I almost outlined the bottle and the glasses. I pretty much confined them to their area. And now the fun begins. So I'm going to go in here and my head is planning. What do I have inside my wine glasses? I have red wine and I'm gonna put the red wine. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and I'm gonna approach the other side with the blue because that side is shadowy. Um, I have a different color here. I also will go down the stem a little bit this time. Did I do that the previous time? No, I'm sure I didn't, but that's okay. I'm gonna add more blue to my bottle. I'm 
gonna get this perfect green. Not washing my brush. So only my first first brush stroke will have that pure color. And after that is going to start to mix. So there is a little bit of the yellow. There, let's get a little orange here. So I created the label. Now, what do you want on the label? Do you want it to look more like there is a picture here? I make smaller dots. Um, let's get some of that ochre. I didn't use ochre last time. And I painted that bottle. Ochre is a beautiful color. Let's get a little bit of blue here. Let's get a little bit of white. So I'm putting a lighter color against the shadow, if you noticed. And let's do this camera off. Let's do 30 minutes have passed. All right, so switching paint brushes. I am going to smaller areas, so I'm gonna use a round five. All right, so I'm gonna use white with a little bit of that beautiful green, and I'm going to apply it. Now, do you see how, because I applied the wine when I start painting the, uh, the bottles. Now this is a little bit dry, so I can go with a lighter color over, lighter color, white, and pretty much is not going to turn pink right away unless I brush over it and brush over it or add more water. So I'm going to do a transparent paint on this. So let's go add a little bit of the top part. There is my pink. And it's okay. I'll still use it. Why not? There you go. I'm going to add some of that pink on the bottom, which I don't have there. But it's another day, another me. If it's an oval, I'm going to move my brush in a circular motion. And again, I'm creating an illusion. I want my illusion to be a good one. separation will happen real fast when I add a tiny bit of a line. And when I say line, I'm not really going around connecting everything. It will be way too predictable. And I don't like to do that. I like to give a little bit more to the imagination of whoever is looking. I wish this was not dry. Let's flip it over. Yeah, okay. Wake it up a little. So it's a really beautiful red. And there it is. This is what I'm calling marrying the picture. I used, introduced a brand new color to this area. I touched up someplace else. Um, I always like to do that and especially when you're fixing something um, and again not connecting the dots not connecting the, li the lines I just give a line where it needs it and that's pretty much it now when I have light on this side I will have inside the bottle more light on this side 
even though I'm painting something that is very unrealistic as colors, I'm still gonna follow some sort of rules of light. And when I say that in art, you can follow the rules, but try to break them more times to see what's gonna happen. Because that's part of the fun. Is this one a little bit better lines? There's this one here. Let's create a stem. And again, what is the stem? It's just a line coming down. And I'm gonna create that. I'll add dirty, dirty white. I don't even have clean white at this point, and that is okay. Now it's pretty much whatever speaks to me, whatever moves, I'm going to touch it. Whatever gives me a little bit more to the imagination, I'll touch it. And is every time, if I paint the same thing one billion times, I'm sure I'm gonna have one billion different pictures of it. So I'm still, oops, too much water, that's okay. I'm just gonna scoop it up. Add a tiny bit of water to this white. This white is gone. this white with a little bit more water and what I want to add is an illusion of glass and this little curved whitish transparent white it gives me an illusion of some sort of a transparent object like the glass now I Feel like this glass is going a little bit to one side so what I'm gonna do is I'll push back with some of my background color and then I'll take my blue and I will change that so now it feels more like it's in the right the right place Let's look at it one more time. Let's add a little bit of the green on the foreground here. Just to brighten a little bit. Because any glass object will take some uh, color from the surrounding. I'm gonna add a little bit of the orange right here because you can see through the glass and also I have to add a little bit of that dark blue right here. Not much. And this is probably had this table a little bit lower because it was ending in inside um, the area where we have wine versus now this is ending right at this line wine level so I'm gonna increase a little bit of that blue here And 
now I'm just having fun with this. And what is left? So we use two brushes, a bigger flat and a smaller angle brush. And now for my signature, I am going to use the zero and it's a very long bristle brush. And I'm going to sign it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And usually I check my um, channel a few times a week, but this is our painting. So the difference between this and that, and it's still a little wet. It looks great. It is fun. Um, now I'm looking at it one more time. I will add a little bit of emphasize on the neck right on the top. There. That looks so much better. Same I'm gonna do to this. So you see a lot sometimes you have to take a break from whatever you're doing to see if there's something you want to touch. So it took me saying goodbye to everybody to go back to it because I looked away, talked about something else, distracted myself. And now I'm gonna touch it up just a bit. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. Any comments are welcome. Thanks.